So this is the Nebula Capsule 3 by Anchor. It's a portable projector, but it's more than just a projector. It's literally an entire living room setup in the size of a Bluetooth speaker. They were kind enough to send this out and partner on this video. And hopefully this overview gives you an idea of whether or not this product could be a perfect fit for your lifestyle. The idea behind it is you have speakers, a TV and a streaming device all in one. And they were able to do that in the size of a Bluetooth speaker. In fact, to give you guys some context on how tiny this device is, I have an iPad mini right here. And even right beside it, it's still a little bit smaller. It is very well made. You have this plastic design all around it with a rubber mat on the bottom. So this way it doesn't slip or fall off a desk. You have a quarter 20 inch thread. So you can like literally mount this to a tripod if you want to give it some height, depending on the wall you're, you're flashing it on, or even just use like a Joby Gorilla Pod so you can like change the angles depending on where you are. So there's a lot of flexibility to this. You have a bunch of capacitive buttons at the top if you want to uh, change the volume or autofocus or turn the device on and off. And you get a few things that come with it. Not only do you get the actual projector, but you get a remote, batteries for the remote, a quick start guide, USB type C cable and a power adapter. This little camera you see on the bottom is, is unique because what it does is, is it scans the wall or flat surface that this thing is facing and does all the keystoning for you. It's automatic. You don't have to go into the settings and fiddle with it and move it left or right to get the perfect shape. It just point at the wall, it auto focuses and you're like off to the races. This is the actual projector portion. It shoots up to 1080p. I wish there was a cover for this because this is kind of like totally exposed when you're done using it. It is indented a bit, so it's not like flush with the rest of the design. So for whatever reason, if a cat comes by and automatically knocks it over, it's not gonna affect the glass. But if you're traveling a lot, you probably wanna cover the entire device. You got the Nebula logo at the bottom and then around it, you have all of these perforated holes so that the speakers inside of here can do its thing. Plus it's used for heat dissipation so that airflow can get in and keep the device actually cool. Now there is a fan in here. It's not super loud, like you do hear it, but it's not nearly as loud as some of those bigger projectors that are currently on the market. You have a bunch of buttons on the back. This one right here allows you to switch between projector mode or Bluetooth speaker. So if you don't wanna like use the projector, you press this, it just becomes a Bluetooth speaker. And because of that, you just get much better battery life. Power button, on the bottom you have your auxiliary port, HDMI, this is 2.1. And then of course your USB type C port in order to power the device. Now the kicker is you can leave this plugged in all you want, right? And just get full day's use. Don't have to unplug it, you just keep going. Or you charge it up and then you use it. Now granted, if you do charge it and use it, there's a little bit of variation in battery life. Like if you're using it as a portable projector to watch movies and stuff, you're gonna get about 2.5 hours of use before needing to charge. If you put it in Bluetooth speaker mode, you can get up to 10 hours of playback when it comes to listening to music. Now the specs on this are really good. You have a dimension of 8.3 centimeters followed by 17 centimeters for height. The overall volume is 0.9 liters and it weighs about 0.9 kilograms. It's Pretty bright for a portable projector. In fact, it does better than the competition at 300 ISO lumens. If you take something like the Samsung Freestyle, that only goes up to 250. Obviously, this is a laser projector, so you have a laser light source. It's using Android TV 11.0, which gives you access to over 7,000 plus mainstream apps, including all your favorites like Netflix and Disney Plus. The speakers are eight watts, Dolby Digital Plus, so it does support better sound quality. Resolution is 1080p, contrast ratio is 400 to one, and then of course you have a screen focus size anywhere from 40 to 120 inches. I found the right place to be around 50 to 60 inches. Ideally you wanna keep it as close to the wall as possible because at the end of the day, this is a 1080p screen, right? So you don't wanna to go too far back where you start losing some of that resolution. The recommended throw distance is anywhere from 0.5 meters to 3.5. Obviously it supports Wi-Fi, so you can cast stuff to it and it supports the five gigahertz network, Bluetooth 5.0, and it has two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of ROM. Now here's the thing, the RAM on this is a little bit low. So I did find when I was casting stuff to this, it would start off slow. And then once the movie got going, everything was nice and smooth. If you are like crazy about speed, then ideally you might wanna hook up a Chromecast to this. Now, some of you might be wondering why Nebula went with laser instead of LED. And there's two specific reasons that I can come up with. One, laser is just way more battery efficient. It's more expensive, but it's more battery efficient. And when you're trying to create a product that's this size that you could literally take anywhere with you, it needs to be as efficient 
as possible. The other thing about laser is that it's just a lot easier to place. With LED, it's a little bit more finicky. You have to place it further back. You have to manipulate it a lot. You have to do a lot more keystoning. With laser, it can be really, really close to the wall and you can still get a nice image. The setup on this guy was super easy. You just plug it in, you push the power button, it turns on, and then you follow the setup process. You pair the remote with by pressing down two buttons and you follow the menu. The entire menu process is through Google or Android TV and it doesn't take long to get going. If you have an Android smartphone with you, it's even faster because you can use your smart device to authenticate this and connect it to your Wi-Fi network. Once you're in, everything is very familiar. If you've ever used any other TV or even a Chromecast, the menu is gonna look at home. You know, you can access all your favorite applications like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Plex, you name it you can download on this device. Now, mind you, you only have 16 gigabytes of storage space, so don't go too crazy, but you can get all the popular stuff on this without any issues. And things you don't want on this, you can just like cast it from your phone. So you have the flexibility of using the software, but also the advantage of using your device if there's anything specific that you just wanna cast to the projector. Now I've tested the projector in a bunch of different situations, but I think my favorite one is giving it to my kids or using it with your family. My kids usually have friends over when they do, sometimes they wanna watch movies. And what they do is they'll pull out the projector from the closet, this LED projector that we have, and then they'll have to connect the laptop, they'll have to plug the laptop into the wall, they'll have to plug the projector into the wall. There's no streaming services on it, so they have to load it up through a browser on the laptop and then they have to use two outlets and an extension cord to get the entire process going. 20 minutes goes by by the time they're ready to watch something. With this, you simply just place it on a table, assuming it's already charged or on a chair, point it at something and you're ready to go. And what they do is they take a blanket and then they let it go down the side of their bunk bed so they have a big display to use. And having the built-in apps inside of this just makes their life so much easier. And I feel like when you have so many obstacles with a projector, you're less likely gonna use it. With this, none of that stuff is in the way. You just turn it on and go. Now, because of the size, you're obviously not gonna get the brightness of a 4K laser Cosmo projector from Nebula. So you have to be realistic in terms of what you're viewing. The best way to view this is with the lights as low as possible. If there's too much daylight coming in, it's obviously going to flush out what you're looking at. Ideally, you don't wanna to be too far back or like the projector to be too far back or the image starts to look less clean just because this is a 1080p projector. I found as close to the wall as possible is the best way to view this. 40 to 50 inch TV on your wall at 1080p looks great on this device. Text is clear, it's clean. You're just not gonna get that same vibrant and brightness that you would with the 4K version. But for a device that like has everything in it, it does a really good job. Like if you're someone who works in corporate and you do a lot of presentations and you, you are sick and tired of relying on whatever technology they have at the office, you can just chuck this thing in your bag, put it on the conference table, point it at a wall, and you can do your entire presentation using this device and your laptop. There's so many little use cases that these projectors provide, and the fact that we're cramming, like literally, an entire living room setup in a capsule this big is really, really impressive. Now, if you have a bigger budget and want a portable projector that's 4K with HDR, the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K has been a lot of fun to use. It's obviously more expensive and doesn't have a battery inside, but it's still really portable due to the way it was designed. It weighs about 10 pounds, but has a nice handle that lets you grab it and go. Just like the Capsule 3, it comes with remote, power cord, and batteries, but you also get an Android dongle that needs to be inserted into the back of the projector. You can supersize the display up to 150 inches, but you're getting crispy 4K UHD and HDR10. It's really bright at 2400 ISO lumens, and because of this, it can withstand moderate amounts of bright ambient light. But obviously, it will look best when the room is completely dark. Now, just like the Nebula Capsule 3, it supports autofocus and auto keystone capabilities. It has a camera in the front to make this happen as soon as the projector is turned on. There's two times 10 watt speakers with two time five watt Dolby audio for a total of 30 watts. Obviously this will not replace a proper speaker setup at home, but they're loud and bassy enough that I wouldn't feel the need to bring extra speakers with me. 
I also decided to do a little gaming on it by connecting my laptop via the HDMI port on the back. I did play some Overwatch 2 and it looked incredible at 4K. The refresh rate is 60 hertz and the response time is a bit on the higher side, but it's totally fine for casual gaming. So here's what I have to say. The price point of these two projectors are very different, right? Like this is more affordable. I like this personally for my kids. Like they just grab it, it's small, it's light. They can just project it at a ceiling and they can watch their favorite content. If you're someone who travels a lot and just wants like an entire entertainment system in their pocket, this is the one to get. But if you're looking for something that's a bit more stationary, but also portable, then the Nebula Cosmo Laser 4K makes a bit more sense because you're just getting 4K HDR. It's portable enough that you can take it to the cottage and it's also good enough that you can carry it around the house. So anyways, that wraps up my overview of these two awesome projectors. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. There'll be links to them as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.